You can be assured when the truth starts being spoken into the air, all hell will break loose. Whether it's in your house or whether it's anywhere. Because the Bible says the principalities and powers are in the air. We don't fight flesh and blood. We're fighting spirits that are using people to manipulate and to bring the followers of Christ down and, and to dissuade them. I'm aware of all this. 31 years I've been wrestling with these ugly spirits. And they can come behind the face of any person, black, white, rich or poor, great or small, in-laws, outlaws, they can use anyone. Demon spirits can use your own children. The Bible says that Peter was used of the devil, wasn't he? Do you remember when Jesus was going to go to the cross? And Peter said, oh, don't go to the cross, Jesus. You're too good for that. And Jesus said, you get behind me, Satan. Put your hand up if you remember that. You get behind me, devil. Don't harass me, you lying thing. So be on guard. Don't let your emotions rule your life. Which is why men are the head of the house, not women. Which is why men are the leaders of a local church, not women. And if you can show me a female pastor in the Bible, I'll start to recruit them myself. A pastor must be the husband of one wife. How can a woman be the husband of one wife unless she's a lesbian? But we've got churches full of that, haven't we? You see, the darkness has come into the churches. But there is a remnant, a holy remnant, who won't come into it. No matter how much money, no matter how much popularity, no matter how many backslaps, no, no matter what. The holy remnant will not come into the garbage of the one world church. So today is the 16th of the 9th, 218. We're at Paradise Now Church Sunday meet and we're going to have a great day. I know it's going to be a great day. It's going to be an awesome day today. Let's welcome Brother Damien and Sister Serena here today. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's good to see Brother Damien and Sister Serena. Uh, not Serena Williams. <laughs> Uh, thank God for that. Um, I met Brother Damien on the street a few weeks ago. Maybe a few weeks, yeah. A few weeks ago. And we got talking there. And uh, we rejoiced. And uh, I have been praying that uh, Brother Damien would come to the knowledge of the truth. And he has. He's come to this place here. <laughs> and this is a place where we have knowledge and truth. And so, and he's brought along Sister Serena. And uh, it's going to be a real glory bound day. I, I firmly believe that. So, we just get it straight that I'm not here to tell you all what you can or cannot do. That would be pretensions. Seeing God created you, you see, I'm not God and nor are you. Because God is God that's true and his word will never change for the likes of me or you. This is surely true blue. Come from above and down to us. Jesus is his name. And if we want to live with him, we're going to have to change. Surrendering that what he really wants, our most prized possession, sin. So he may give us holiness in heaven deep within. Now holiness is not for some but all who claim they're his and holiness is another word for doing what God says. Tis paradise some do say when a man or woman repents trusting and obeying my God Jesus the Christ 
unto death and everyone said, Amen. That's a little poem the Lord gave me recently. Very simple and very true and I hope you take advantage of it by heeding it. What's going on around the world? It's good to know the Lord said to watch and pray. Amen. Watch and talk to him about what's going on. So I do every day. Um, God knows uh, how to get our attention. You know, someone might die in the family. All sorts of things might be happening in the family. This is all God trying to get your attention. Saying, look, 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 look. Look what's happening. The house is falling apart. Where are you? What are you doing? Florida. We, we, we have a look at um, the United States and, and Hurricane Florence uh, over there in the Carolina Sea. A million people, a million people uh, troubled. What is God saying? Water's just sinking, houses and cars floating and people dying. What is God saying? Oh, that's not God. They say that's the devil. What? Since when does the Bible say that the devil is the creator? He's, he's a creation. The devil is the angel Lucifer, the fallen angel. He is a created being. The devil can do nothing unless God allows him. The devil went to God and said, I'm going to test this Job of yours. You reckon he's faithful? You take away all his possessions and see if he's faithful to you. Well, Job went the extra mile, didn't he? And showed the Lord. God went the extra mile and said, I'm going to do more than take his possession. I'm going to wipe his family out. I'm going to take his children. I'm going to allow everything to be totally destroyed. But you wait and see. I'll show you, O oh serpent low, that Job is faithful to me. Come what may. <laughs> and old Job, he's sitting on the ash here. So the devil went out and put old Job on the ash heap that day. Hey? And Job's wife came along and she was of no help. She said, why don't you curse that God of yours? So we know that God wasn't her God, that God of yours. A lot of things come out of tragedy, don't they? You start to see who's who. Who's really my brother? There it is written on the sign there. There it is written on the sign, Luke 21, Luke 8, 21. They're the ones that are going to be saved. No one else. I don't care how sweet... I don't care how pretty, I don't care how handsome, I don't care how charitable. It won't save your soul. The new covenant. I made a covenant with Jesus. I made an agreement to love Jesus first and foremost. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, strength and mind. And love your neighbour as you love yourself. Brother... Love your neighbour as you love yourself. Come on in, brother. That's the agreement I made. Do you see in the new covenant, do you see in the new covenant that you're not obligated to love your family and friends before God? You're not obligated to put your family before God. You're not obligated to put people before God. You're obligated to put Jesus before people. 
That's the new covenant. Anything else is sin. And we don't want to be in sin. Because you know what happens when you're in sin? It leads to sin. And you know darkness has a habit of leading you into more darkness. And you know what? As it was for one church called the Laodicean church, they didn't even know. They were in darkness. You know how I know they were in darkness? Because it says you don't know what you're doing. You don't even know you're poor, wretched, blind, miserable and naked. You think you're, you're going places. You think you're wealthy. I have no need of anything. Oh, look, look at our church and look at our, my life. I have no one for anything. And here's Jesus outside knocking on the door. I stand at the door and knock. Is there anyone in this church that's willing to face the light? Is there anyone? Just one. He is one. He who has an ear, let them hear. The knock of the lawn. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Come and take this sin away from me. I can't live in it anymore. It's getting dark, too dark to see. Feel I'm knocking on heaven's door. Someone say amen. amen. What's going on around the world? Well, the uh, AFL, Australian Football League, the finals have come and they had 90,000 expected in one arena for the 2018 finals. You stop and think about that one for the godly nation. Can you show me one church in Australia that would have 90,000 people attend on a Sunday? Just one. Even the rock and rollers. Even the hell, hell songs. I mean hill song. They don't even get 9,000. And they just tell another G. They're just preaching another Jesus altogether. Hello. Hello. Don't let the devil let you go to sleep there. He don't want you to hear the truth. He don't want you to have a little sleepy down the back. Amen? That's what the devil don't want. Look, you know the devil don't mind if you go to five churches a day, on a Sunday and a Saturday. He don't mind. As long as you're not going to a church that speaks the truth. Because when you go to a church that speaks the truth, there's a good chance that you might obey that truth and go free. <laughs> and then the devil has lost one of his people, hasn't he? That's all what the devil's about. The devil's in a competition with Jesus and Jesus just laughs at the devil and said, hey, stupid, there's no competition. I defeated you at the tree. I disarmed all principalities and powers at the tree. Don't you understand? <laughs> and then the devil turns around and says, but it's okay, because there's a lot of people that want to live in sin in the churches. <laughs> so they'll follow me. <laughs> and I'll deceive them. And I think they're going to heaven because <laughs> they go to church on Sunday and they give their old tea bags to the mission field. Ninety thousand watching grown men chase after a ball made out of pigskin. I mean, you talk about insanity. 
that that is just so you know Paul said when I was a child I behaved like a child <laughs> now I'm a man and I put away the pigskin and God has made a real man out of me you know real men don't live in sin Yeah, you'll be able to ask yourself when you get home if you're a real man. We don't have 90,000 cars in the car park here today and you might wonder why because, well, we are not an activity centre. We are not a social club and we're not a hospital for the self-inflicted. That's why we don't have 90,000 cars. You know, so many people want so much from God, but what are they going to do for him? You see, the once saved, always saved teaching of the devil, which is the teaching of the Garden of Eden. You can, you, you can eat the fruit, you can touch the fruit and still have your relationship with God. No, you can't. You cannot live in sin and be saved. That's a lie from the devil, that you can live in sin and be saved. That, that is not the way of the Lord. And there's 80 plus scriptures to prove. So I wouldn't even think of arguing with that one. Hey? See, once saved, always saved, only breeds selfish people. Jesus is going to do it all. I'm just going to sit back on the waterbed. And Jesus is going to do it all. Because it's once saved, always saved. You can't lose your salvation. If you've been really saved, you can't be, lose your salvation. That's garbage. There's many men in the Bible that were really saved. One was an apostle. His name was Judas. Was he really saved? Yes, he was. But then he turned on Jesus, didn't he? For money. For money. And then he tried to backtrack again. And then he came back to the Pharisees with the money and the Pharisee says, oh, no, you don't. Uh-uh, uh-uh, we don't want the money. That's dirty money now. You got your own blood on your own head. You can't be an apostle of Jesus and not be saved. Because to be an apostle, a true apostle, which Judas was, he'd have the spirit operating in his life. Don't be fooled. I can tell you now. It's no easy walk. I came from being a biker to a soldier in the Australian army to a pastor and a soldier in the army of Christ. I know what tough living's about, but there's nothing tougher than walking with Jesus. I'll tell you now, you've got to be tough. I mean, to walk with Jesus, not to go to church on Sunday. Any, any idiot can get out of bed and go to church on Sunday. Any sinner. But to walk with Jesus, you need backbone. And not ordinary <laughs> backbone. Not backbone that you're going to produce, but Holy Ghost Backbone. That means a surrendered life. Then the Holy Ghost takes over. And it's no longer a struggle. You're actually planning all week. Your whole week consists of getting the word out, reaching out to people, putting money aside to give on Sunday. And arranging your life, your whole family and life to be at church on Sunday. 
before time. I call that real deal stuff. You know what I mean? Not for one month, decade after decade. That's real deal. That's my view anyway. You might have a different view. You might have a view like, oh, if I've got any money left over, I'll just, you know, put it in the tin. Well, that's all God is to you, just a leftover. And that's all you think of his word, a leftover. you just putting yourself first. You're just selfish. You're just one saved, always saved. Hello? Hello? Don't let the devil cause you to go to sleep. It's a big one of the devil. I'm tired. Break through. Put it in second gear for, for a change in your life and get into the Holy Ghost. Get out of the flesh. Stand up. And I look and I say, oh, there's a, a brother or sister standing up. They're keen to hear the truth. They don't want to go to sleep. But if you want to go to sleep, I mean, I don't want to be cruel. You go outside and sleep. You go in your car and sleep. Don't insult the Holy Spirit or me. I don't have it here. I don't need it here. I'm not a desperado looking for bums on seats. I don't need that. I'm here to preach the truth. As a faithful servant of the Lord, I'm not some ear tickler and back scratcher. So people will come and that's extra tithe. I don't even preach tithing. It's not even New Testament. That's for faithless pastors who have no faith in God. Faith is without Price tags. So you see ministers selling books. You see people selling books and discs. They got no faith. They don't even believe God or back them. They're faithless. I don't care who the writer of the book. I don't care if he's known as Mr. Faith Man of the Year. He's got no faith. I don't care what the record is. He got a book with a price tag on the back and a barcode. That man's got no faith. That woman's got no faith. They don't trust Jesus. Freely it's given, so let's freely give. Right? It was a black man who told me of Jesus. My brother go freely, freely to me. He didn't charge me for the, the message, the word. He didn't charge me. He gave it to me free. He didn't say, now I'm going to chain you to a seat in my church. No, he never said that. He never said, oh, now you've got to go to Bible college. No, he never said that. He said, hey, brother. He said, you got the Holy Ghost. Hey. You need the Holy Ghost. Not a piece of paper calling you a, a, an imposter. Pastor Jones, the imposter. Oh, I have a piece of paper calling myself pastor. I went to the Bungi Wungi Bible College in Vanity Fair. That's not a pastor. No pastor in my eyes goes to Bible College. Because I have eyes for the Bible. And the Bible says in Ephesians 4, 11, He who ascended and descended gifted men, gave men gifts, apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist. Anyone else outside of that? They don't have it. They're just solic wannabes. Social club leaders. Money makers. Con men and con women. Someone say amen if you want to. You don't have to. You can say, oh my, or oh why did I ever come here? Because the Spirit brought you here to hear this. Because ain't no other church going to tell you this. 
They're going to give you some sunny Sunday sermon. And we ain't even started the message yet. This is just entree. Hallelujah. This is only starters. I move in the spirit. Last Wednesday night, I, my wife and I and, and, and even my son, Brother Shadrach, and my daughter, Sister Hannah, and uh, a friend of Brother Shadrach's, we went to an Italian restaurant. And uh, it was a, a great restaurant. I, 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 I waited on the Lord, and there's a lot of different restaurants, but the Lord directed me to this restaurant, and it, it had beautiful, authentic Italian food. And we had our meal, and it was great, and then we left. And then the next day was quite a, a miraculous day. I could not believe it, because behind me in the restaurant was a, a big picture or photo or because it was Italian, you know, Italians are related a lot of time with the mafia and, and the Godfather and, and um, Marlon Brando was known as the Godfather and he was in the f big picture behind me. Marlon Brando with his tuxedo on and anyway, I walked in uh, I was walking out of the shopping centre the very next morning and a guy came through the door. We both met at the doorway and he had a shirt, a t-shirt with Marlon Brando on it. Now you think about that. That is crazy. I didn't find him when he was walking around the shopping centre. Uh, it, it wasn't a month later. It wasn't a month before. It was the very next morning. And then that opened the door for me. I went straight over to him and I said, Do you see that fella on your T-shirt? I said, he was sitting behind me in the restaurant last night. And I, he said, what? I said, yeah, on the wall. And I pulled out my phone and showed him a picture of me and my wife sitting in the restaurant with Marlon Brando sitting in a photo on the wall. You talk about moving in the spirit. And he was so grateful to receive a track and the message of the Lord. Now, I probably would not have even bothered with him if I was not so conscious of Marlon Brando on the wall. God works mysteriously. God is all-powerful. He can do anything if you're willing to follow him. But if you don't follow him, you've tied his hands. We'll see that in the message today. So, there's a lot of people killing themselves. In Perth, there was three young girls and a mother and a grandmother all stabbed to death by the mother's husband or partner who was 20 to 23 years old. Hey? Jesus was not in that house. It, you know, it's a blessing to have Jesus in the house because you don't do that sort of thing. When you have Jesus in the house, you don't cheat the government. When you have Jesus in the house, you're not lying and, and, and being dishonest. You're not sneaking around, making up stories. You know, if you lie, you've got to lie again to cover the lie. It's simple as that. And liars will burn in hell. So it's best just to put your big face right into the face of the other person and tell the truth. Because if you get away with one lie, well, you haven't got away with it because God knows. But if you got away with one lie, you're going to lie again. And then you're going to lie again until you just become a serial liar and end up in the fires of hell. So it's best to speak the truth. Come what may. Come clean. That's what the Bible's all about. Come clean. Be honest with God. Because if you're not with God, you're never going to be honest with anyone. Okay. Uh, I seen a man on the street the other day. He came up to me and he said, I'm already blessed. I said, oh, really? I said, so you know Jesus? He said, look, 
I'm so blessed. My wife has gone now. I've got her out of the way. And I, I have custody of the children and I know Jesus. I said, you know, you can be more blessed than that. I said, you can obey Jesus. He said, what? I said, yeah. I said, you can actually put Jesus first in front of your children and yourself. What do you think of that? Oh, no, no, mate. No, no, that, that's not right. Ch family first, then Jesus. Family first, then Jesus. I thought, oh, no, he's been listening to that stinking radio station. Family first. He's probably got a sticker on his car, family first. People who say family first are hell bound. Jesus first. Jesus first. If you believe that, put your hand up. Look, if Jesus is not first, uh, you got no hope. You're fooling yourself. You're not fooling me. You're not fooling Jesus. You're fooling yourself. The Bible calls itself deceived. Yeah. And then I ran, ran across a brother... Well, yeah, I call everyone brother. And I call everyone sister because they're either my lost brothers or saved brothers. And then I let them know in due course whether they're my saved brothers or lost brothers. Anyway, this guy said to me uh, as I was preaching on the street, no one's holy, only Jesus is holy. I know all about Jesus. You know, God understands. You know, God understands when I sin. You know, and I, and I stumble. I said, are you stumbling or are you willfully sinning? He had nothing to say after that. Are you stumbling or are you willfully sinning? And let me also ask you, does not the scripture say that God can present you spotless and perfect and even keep you from stumbling. Isn't that what the scriptures say? Can you understand what I'm saying here this morning so far? You're not fooling anyone but yourself. If you're not going to be honest. He wasn't being honest. He was looking for loopholes in, in, in the Bible so he could live in sin comfortably and think in his mind that he's going to heaven. It's not possible. Because you're mocking God. If you say you're born again, you know Jesus, and you've got the power of the Holy Ghost. And God makes a way of escape for all sin, all temptation. He makes a way of escape. You're not fooling anyone. You know, there comes time when a pastor has to just, you know, he sees clearly, you know, that by the Spirit, uh, it, certain things just have to be highlighted. Because we don't want to end up like the One World Church, do we? You know, the, going through the motions, but not saved. Hey? Right? Let's um, move towards the message today. Uh, this guy is a very famous preacher on the internet and probably amongst the churches. His name is Francis Chan. And, and he says, the most important lesson I could teach. And it was called, the most important lesson he could teach was spending time with Jesus. Can you believe it? This guy is considered a spiritual man. Francis Chan. He's very popular. He's the man that... He, he has a title from pastor to millionaire. Can you believe that? Can you believe a true pastor and shepherd could be a millionaire when there's so many people hungry? There's so many people that 
in the local churches that can't pay their bills. But yet you've got a from pastor to millionaire. If he was a millionaire, it'd only be for a week, wouldn't it? If he was genuine. But anyway, the people love this stuff. I don't read that kind of progression in the scriptures from pastor to millionaire. Where is that? Tell me the apostle. Tell me the disciple who went from pastor to millionaire. I can show you disciples of Jesus that went from millionaires to paupers. Paul the apostle was a, a, a very wealthy man when he was Saul. And then when he came to Jesus, he was looking for bread and water. Moses, he had more money than you could even imagine. He ended up with a stick. So let me ask the question, this important message, the most important message of Mr. Francis Chan, spending time with Jesus, that's what it's all about. And he, he, he peddles books, he sells books, he, conflicting with Revelation 22.17. So let me ask the question, if, if Jesus is indwelling and you live by faith obedience, how can you not spend time with Jesus? You know, if my wife is with me all day today, walking with me down the beach, and we go and have something to eat, she's with me, beside me, how can I not spend time with her? Now, I'm going to go the extra mile and say, well, Jesus is indwelling. How can we not spend time with him if we're walking in faith and obedience? How can you not be one with him as Father is with Jesus? If you're truly born of him. You get it? Born of him? <laughs> And then we have death to self, don't we, on a daily basis. You know, the, the true disciple is not about spending time with Jesus. The true disciple is about being natural in the spirit as you are in the natural. Not some religious up and down, yo-yo, merry-go-round, Ferris wheel. I'm going, you know, they say I'm going to church on Sunday as if they're going to meet Jesus there or something. I thought he was indwelling. Hello? I thought he was indwelling. I thought Jesus was dwelling within you. You see how religious has absolutely destroyed endeavoured Stinking religion and the one world church, money making pastors have totally endeavoured to destroy the true walk of the disciple of Christ. Let's go into the message today. We're going to be reading out of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and we're going to start reading 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Hallelujah. Nothing's more important than Jesus or uh, the Word. Nothing's more important. No one, not your wife, not your children, not your relatives, not the newborn baby, not the granddaughter or the grandson. They're not more important than Jesus. I can tell you now. That's the bottom line. They're not more important than Jesus. If you think they are, you're deceived. The devil has blinded you. 2 Corinthians 6 and the verse is 11. O Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. Now in return for the same I speak as to children, you also be open. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? 
And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God. They shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them. Be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. This is not a, a pastor in the world or the one world church or any other church saying this. This is God Almighty. This is not the Pope. This is not Uncle Bill or, or Grandpa. This is God Almighty saying this. So that tells me straight off. That tells me up front very clearly. We can't mess with this. We can't overlook it for our relatives. We can't overlook it for our family. We can't overlook this and say, oh, I'm not going to bother about that bit. I'm just going to read John 3.16 and Psalm 23. And I'm going to deceive myself and believe that that's going to go away and God won't require that of me. Because he's going to require it of every one of us. <laughs> The moment you read that, he, you're required of that. The moment you read what I just read and you just read, the moment you read 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11 to 18, the moment you read it, you're accountable to God Almighty. You are accountable. I am accountable. And on the judgment day, we will give account whether we obey that or whether we did not obey that for the sake of a human, even sinful humans, unclean humans, ungodly humans. So our message today is called Setback. S-E-T-B-A-C-K. Set back. Who's setting you back? Who's holding you back? Hey? Well, the scripture here we're dealing with primarily is verse 12. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affection. The Apostle Paul and his associate ministers, he says we. You are not restricted by us, the Apostles. Apostles don't restrict people. Apostles set people free. Apostles lead people into great heavenly liberty. If they'll only hearken, if they'll only listen. But most people prefer a ball and chain around their leg. And whose name is written on that ball and chain? Well, it might be your grandchildren. It might be the grandchildren's boyfriend. It might be your own children. It might be your own wife. She might be the ball and chain that's going to swing you like a wrecking ball into hell. It might be your associates. Then again, as the scripture says, you are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. And behind all that is self, isn't it? Your own affection. Whatever we gravitate to, whoever we gravitate to, is in association with our, our own affections. 
not Christ. Christ tells us here his affection. Christ's affections are not unbelieving. Christ's affections are not ungodly. Christ's affections are not related to darkness. Christ's affections are not idolatrous. Christ's affections have no association with such things as ungodliness. But the churches today and the one world church, they have this other Jesus that says we can do what we want as long as we go to church or as long as we put our family first or as long as we uh, give an offering or tithes, we'll go to heaven. That's a lie from the devil. The devil don't mind if you go to church as long as you don't hear the truth. And then he, he doesn't even mind if you hear the truth as long as you don't do the truth. Because there was many people in the time of the prophet Ezekiel and they sat before Ezekiel the prophet and they said, boy, this man can preach. He sounds like a man on, a, on an instrument, you know, he's so great. But they went away and did not do one thing he said. Ezekiel. I'm pretty sure it's 33, 30 to 33. Well, they're about Ezekiel. Hallelujah. Ezekiel. Can we turn there, please? Go to the Old Testament to Ezekiel. Ezekiel, Ezekiel, Ezekiel. Ezekiel 33, chapter 33, verse 30. As for you, son of man, the children of your people are talking about you beside the walls and in the doors of the houses, and they speak to one another, everyone saying to his brother, please come and hear what the word is that comes from the Lord. So they come to you as people do. They sit before you as my people and they hear your words, but they do not do them for with their mouth they show much love, but their hearts pursue their own gain. Indeed, you are to them as a very lovely song of one who has a pleasant voice and can play well on a guitar. For they hear your words, but they do not do them. And when this comes to pass, surely it will come. Then they will know that a prophet has been among them. When it comes to pass, and it sure will, they will not do. Hey? Very interesting. Title of our message today, set back, set back, set back. We're holding ourselves back. When it talks about in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12, you are restricted, you are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. That's relating to Adamic affections, not messianic. Adamic your old man, your old ways, your old traditions, your old culture, your own loves, likes, passions, fetishes. That's how you're restricting yourself from the blessing and the outworking of the cross. Humongous are the blessings and the outworking of the cross. What Jesus done at the cross, you can't count it. You can't even imagine it. You'll never get to the end of it in your lifetime. He done so much. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. But because it is so, I go to prepare a place for you. That's if you're faithful. I am the way, 
Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one else. And Jesus said, you've got to give up your life. Jesus said to come out from among the sinners, the ungodly, the idolaters, no matter who they are. He didn't say who they were. Because everybody's talking about. Come out from among them. Who? Them. He named them, didn't he? The ungodly. The unbeliever. The unholy. He named them here. Don't commune with them. Those who walk in darkness, darkness is sin. Oh, but the churches say, oh, Jesus, he was a friend of the sinner. You show me where Jesus hung out with sinners. Show me. He went to a tax collector's place one time. His name was Zacchaeus. Because Jesus knew he was going to repent. Jesus never hung around with sinners. The only time Jesus went to sinners was to tell them the truth. He said, if I had not have told you your sin, you would have no sin. Can someone say amen? Amen. But he told them and then he went his way. Jesus and his disciples came aside. Jesus ministered to multitudes and then he came aside. Just like we are here. And then next week and tomorrow I'll go for and I'll minister to the people in, in the public. But I won't hang out with them. I won't drink plonk with them. I won't smoke cigarettes with them. I won't go along with unbelievers telling me what to do in my house. I'll tell them straight. You don't belong in my house. Because you reject my master. And you reject the message I bring. Get out of here. And don't come back. That's what I'd say. Oh, no, no, we're going to love them there. We're going to love them into the kingdom. What a lot of devils swallow. That's devil's talk. Jesus, he preached the word. The disciples and the apostles preached the word and the people received it or they didn't. They didn't hang around year after year after year after year after year. Matter of fact, Jesus said, if they don't receive your words, what did he say? Dust your feet off and go your way. And it'll be more tolerable for sodomites and homosexuals and lesbians. It'll be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for them. Is that what Jesus said? Put your hand up if you believe me today. We got everyone. I'm going to start preaching in a minute, I tell you. I really feel like preaching today. You know, the devil does the wrong thing, you know. He stirs me up. He shouldn't do that. Because I start preaching then. Really preaching. When I see the devil come to devour my flock... My brothers and sisters, I tell you, I'll nail that filthy thing. There and then I'll say, you dog, get out. You filthy thing, get out and don't come back. That's the way of a true prophet. There's no tiddlywinks the barber and Mary had a little lamb. Oh, I better watch what I say. I mightn't get much in the collection today. Can you imagine me surviving 31 years like that? 
Look, I've had congregations over the years angry with me for what I preach. And you know what? They never go in the offering. And you know what God done? He brought a stranger from Singapore to put a roll of money in the offering that just blew my mind. A woman from another country. <laughs> you think I'm bound up by humans? You think I'm, I'm living my life hanging on some tithe or offering? Time to get real. Time to realise that I know who my provider is. From whence my help comes from above. All the rest is just window dressing. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is a series we're in, and, and, and for those who came today to visit, gee, I should have been preaching some lollipop message. I might have been able to write them up and put them in my uh, registration, my church registrar. If I, if, oh, Brother Damien and Sister Serena's coming. Oh, I better have a honeycomb uh, message. I better have a lollipop message. Then they might stay. And I can write them in my church registrar. That's another two bums on the seats. Yippee! And God looks down and says, You weakling. I don't want to use you no more. It's up to us, isn't it? We're doing a series anyway. It's called Jesus Mindset Atmosphere. And boy, isn't the atmosphere beautiful here today? Oh, very judgment seating. <laughs> very sober. Woo! Jesus! Ah! Ah! It's not a religious atmosphere, is it, Brother Damien? <laughs> I don't think Brother Damien's ever been to a church like this in his whole life. Which tells you something, Brother Damien. It tells you something. Yeah. I'm either of the devil or I'm of Jesus. <laughs> and all those other places, if I'm of Jesus, they're of the devil. We're going places, aren't we? We're taking ground here today. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Whew. Glory to the Lamb of God who come to take away the sin of the world and have mercy on us. We've got so much here today. I don't know. I might have to break this up into another part. Because this is our, this is our uh, eighth part in the Jesus mindset and atmosphere. You see, if you really love Jesus, this atmosphere here today is, oh, hit me with some more. Oh, yeah, let the righteous smite me. Ooh, yeah, baby. Oh, I'm feeling it. But if you don't have a Jesus mindset, you won't be able to, you, you, you can't wait to get out of the door and not come back. But if you've got a Jesus mindset and you've got uh, Jesus as number one and you've got the Holy Ghost and fire burning in your inner man, you're just going to love this so much. You're going to just say, look, no one put in the offering because I'm putting everyone's in. <laughs> Woo! Jesus! Jesus! The righteous are as bold as lions. Jeremiah said, there's a fire burning in my bones. I can't hold it back. He didn't say there's a candle flickering. That's Marilyn Monroe, sorry. There, there's a fire burning in my bones. I can't hold it back. That's what Jeremiah. I tell you what, I praise God that he's allowed me to keep the fire for 31 years. I've had them come from the north, south, east and west. I've had people put checks in front of me. I had one guy offer me, oh, look, we're going to operate and go into New Guinea in a helicopter, Paul. We're going to do this and that. But you're going to have to change a bit of your doctrine. I said, no, mate, you're going to have to leave. There's the door. You want me to walk you there? 
or you ride to get there. I've had blokes come to me with the best of fish, chocolates and, 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 and meats and trying to turn me from the doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I said, boy, that was nice chocolate. Oh, yeah, I like that Don Perignon uh, uh, non-alcoholic too. And, and, and everything else that you brought here, the Perrier water and uh, the fish and fresh fish straight out of the ocean. But I'm not changing. So you wasted your fish and your Perrier water and your non-alcoholic wines. See you later. Next. Because the Lord always leaves a peg, doesn't he? The Lord always leaves one in every generation, in every city, in every nation. He leaves one that will stand up. Is there not one that will tell us what the Lord is saying? Oh, hey, what about Micaiah? Uh, oh, no, 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 no. We don't want to hear what Micaiah says, you know. He's always speaking the truth. Hello, hell, oh, hell, oh. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. So here we are, and we're in verse 12, your affections. We're going to deconstruct that word restricted. Oh, that looks like another message on its own, doesn't it? That's another message. The word restricted, restricted. 2 Corinthians six twelve. you are not restricted by us. But you are restricted by your own. You see the selfishness there? You see the selfishness. Own. Me. Me, my, I. Me too. Me. It's what I want. It's what I want to do. Well, we do Christmas because we do it for the children. No, you don't. You do it for you. Oh, why do you do it for the children? Because... We, we like to see the smile on the children's faces. And they restrict themselves by their own affections. There's no Christmas in the Bible. And if you can show me Christmas, I'll give you $100 cash. Better still, you don't even have to show me Christmas. Christmas. Because the word I know, it's, it's just not there. But how about you show me where Mary celebrated Jesus' birth every year? And I'll give you $100. It's not there, is it? Show me where the apostles taught that it was tradition, godly tradition, and, uh, 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 to put a, a day or a month aside every year for Jesus. No, Paul never taught that. Paul taught you put every minute aside for Jesus. Paul taught we die daily. Paul taught that we carry about in our bodies the dying of Christ. That doesn't sound like own affections, does it? Own affections. Your own wants, your own fleshy, carnal, Adamic loves, and passions and, and, and fetishes restrict you from getting what God has for you. You know that? That's why so many people are displaced people. They're in a church. They've been going to that church they, for the last 10, 20 years. They're displaced. They're, they, they've got cobwebs on them. They're not happy. They, they, they're at a quandrum. They can't understand why. Why is it like this? Because of your own affections. You're choosing yourself over God. You're choosing the old man's way, the Adamic way. You're choosing the, don't tell me, I know. Just like the bloke that said to me on the street, oh, I know Jesus, I am already blessed, mate. My wife's gone, I got rid of her. Now she's on drugs, but I got her out of the house. Now I've got custody of the children and I, and I've, I know Jesus. I said, oh, well, so Jesus is first, is he? Number one. No, 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 no. Jesus is not number one. I turned the, the new covenant upside down and spear tackled Jesus into the ground. He's number two. 
My family is number one. My grandchildren are number one. Grandma's number one. Grandpa. My culture, my tradition is number one. Jesus is number two. He's just my ATM man. Jesus is just my, my uh, oh, heal me, heal me. Pray for me, pray for me. Heal me, heal me. Is that how you treat Jesus? Look, I'm not just talking to uh, people here. I'm talking to people who are listening <laughs> on, the, on YouTube. I'm talking to everyone. This message at this church is not oh, specifically even for this church. The Holy Ghost will, 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 will quicken you and, 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 and awaken my congregation here tonight to go forward just to take this message to the people. Do you understand? A lot of people think, oh, I hear the way he's speaking to the church. Oh, the people in the church mustn't be much. No, this is the message and the teaching and the preaching that they're to take forward next week. <laughs> and it all glorifies Jesus, doesn't it? It all puts Jesus as number one. And I'm sad to say people don't like that. People don't like that. So many people say to me on the street, I want to be on fire like you. I want to do this. I want to do that. And as soon as I asked them, are you prepared to give up your sin? Oh, I'm not really ready yet. Uh, are you prepared to put Jesus number one? Oh, I'll have to think about that. I just said, look, man, you got the wrong bloke. <laughs> I can't help you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Next. I can't help you. It comes to a place and a time where the pastor says, I can't help you. You're going to have to go somewhere else because I can't help you because you're not listening. You're not listening. Because if you were listening, you wouldn't be living like you are and you wouldn't be talking like you are and you wouldn't be whinging like you are. You would have overcome your own affections by uh, the power of the Holy Ghost through faith and obedience. And everyone said, amen. and amen and amen. <laughs> so our message today, our message today is set back. You know, we, we, have, we have constructed our own ball and chain and we're dragging, oh, you know, uh, oh, do I have to go to church on Sunday? Oh, I feel a bit tired, you know. Oh, I've got a headache. Oh, you know, I spent too long in the gym. Yeah. Oh. I had relatives visit. I'm a bit tired. Because I put my pagan relatives first. If that's you, you either attend to it or you, you just keep going further down the gurgler in the spirit all the way to hell. You see, Jesus is not the manager of Kmart. Jesus is Jesus. He's God Almighty. He's the creator. And he's not going to put up with your leftovers. He don't want your leftovers. He wants your life. You say, well, pastor, that's an unrealistic request. All right. Can we open our Bibles, please, in the writings of Matthew chapter 10? Matthew chapter 10. We're going to read Paul Sheehan's unrealistic request. Matthew chapter 10. <laughs> Uh, uh, here we, we will read Paul Sheehan's unrealistic request. This is the words of the hard taskmaster Jesus. Matthew ten thirty four. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother-in-law, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. 
He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my name's sake will find it. There it is. That's the words of the hard taskmaster Jesus. <laughs> put your hand up if you like those words. Yeah, I love them. I'm going to put two hands up. You know, if I like something, I just put one hand up. When I love something, I'm going to put two hands up, and if I can, one foot, you know? Just sort of like that. Oh, yeah. I put the, the two feet up and two hands, but I'd fall on the ground. They're the words of the hard task master, Jesus. You can go home and study that all night, and I tell you, not one word's going to change. You know how I know that? I'm going to show you. Let's go to the writings of Peter, please. Peter. Peter, pumpkin eater. Had a wife and didn't know how to keep her. We're going to go to the writings of one... uh, Where are we? Yeah, one Peter. Chapter one. Verse 24, all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers and its flower falls away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. It's not going to change. It's not going to change. Matthew ten thirty-four to, what was it, 39, it's not going to change. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Oh, I love you so much. Oh, yeah, you're my wongi bongi dongi. And oh, I'd do anything for you, Jesus, except Matthew 10, 34 to 39. Unsaved. Next. Unsaved. You know... That's a very hard thing to say and to hear if if our own affections are ruling. But if you have given up your life to Jesus, it's not hard to do. It's just a reflex action. It's natural to do that. In the spirit. As you are in the natural. And everyone said. Oh hallelujah. So we we actually have a part two. We actually have a part two on this. So it'll be. It'll be part. Nine. B. (laughs) That we're going to go into next week. Are you ready? Part nine B. Setback. Don't be a fool, give up your sin now, set back. Don't be a fool, give up your sin now, set back. Set back a little, I'm living in sin. Set back a little, I'm not obeying. Set back a little, I'm falling in sin. All day, I'm in sin. So, uh, yeah, holding ourselves back. I believe you can couple that. 2 Corinthians 6, 12, you can couple that with self-deceived. Yeah, as uh, was said, um, the apostles were open-hearted. They weren't sleezers. I'm going to read this, now finish, and then I'll finish. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. Oh, Corinthians. I, mean, I reckon he would have said, oh, 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 Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You see that? Now, you want to put that into daily word, you'd say, we're honest. I'm being honest with you, Corinthians. But who wants honesty? Such a lonely word. Everyone is so untrue. Honesty. 
It's hardly ever heard, but mostly what I need from you. And I'm going to leave it there. Amen? I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to ask the Lord to open every listener's eyes and ears. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody said.